one. <laughs> It has now been 16 months since we finished the install of our 10 kilowatt electric motor aboard Fantasia. And what a time it's been. We have traveled 3,500 nautical miles along the glorious Queensland coast, giving the system a reasonably solid test. Has it proved an equivalent replacement for the 30 horsepower diesel? Has it been reliable? What teething problems and lessons have we had to deal with? Has it been a success or are we ready to reinstall the trusty old diesel? These are the questions I'll be answering in this video. I think a lot of people find it hard to believe that a 10 kilowatt electric motor that technically translates to 13.3 horsepower can come anywhere close to matching a 30 horsepower diesel. Well, just to narrow that gap, a 10 kilowatt motor refers to its continuous output. In fact, these 10 kilowatt electric motors can actually develop up to 14 kilowatts or 18.6 horsepower. These high kilowatt outputs can only be maintained briefly, in the same way that a diesel engine can only be run at max power briefly. You may have seen my earlier video where I run tests comparing these two power sources. Here my conclusion was that the 30 horsepower diesel can produce slightly more revs and thus a marginally higher top speed while the 10 kilowatt electric motor develops prop thrust faster due to the early available torque. So during the course of our cruise the electric motor was even better for manoeuvring able to supply those quick bursts of thrust one needs while lifting the anchor or turning in a tight space against strong winds. Since we always ran our diesel at the economical rate, we also found that the 10 kilowatt motor's economical rate produced a similar boat speed of around 5 knots. So for general cruising, the performance was identical. The question still stands. Does the 10 kilowatt electric motor actually match the performance of the 30 horsepower motor it replaced? Well, from our experiences over the last 16 months, the answer is a definitive yes on all counts. So, just like mind and body are one, battery and motor are one in an electrical motor setup. So, let's take a look at the Fantasia battery setup, which I have not looked at for ever since it's been installed that's how much maintenance LifePo 4 batteries require and I I really like that. Right so this is the 15 kilowatt 48 volt motor battery fitted with a daily 300 amp BMS and this is our house bank 400 amp hours at 12 volts so 5 kilowatts of power this has been proving a very simple system and we are able to use excess power from the engine battery to run our 12 volt house loads through this simple 48 volt to 12 volt converter. This has enabled us to get through those overcast periods even without having to economise on power usage. People always want to know how much range we have and that is a tricky question. While you can use 9 to 10 kilowatts for extended periods of time, we certainly don't in practice. We may use this full power to motor against a strong wind to the other side of a big bay or up a narrow channel into a blow. 11 to 14 kilowatts are only for short bursts of power while manoeuvring. 7 to 8 kilowatts is amazingly powerful and feels equivalent to the high power we would use when running the diesel, able to push us upwind into 20 knots and more at a good speed. So we have two hours at what I consider full power. Five kilowatts is still very powerful. And even three kilowatts pushes us along at well over four knots.
while 2 kilowatts is still getting us along at just under 4 knots. Motor sailing obviously ups these speeds. So at low power we have a range of up to 30 nautical miles. These are figures not taking into account the daily solar input. On a decent sunny day, this can mean 3 hours of full power, or a range of over 40 nautical miles. Details and evidence of this can be found in the video I mentioned before. So, in practice, does this fairly modest 15 kilowatt battery keep up with our demands? For us, it has proved more than ample, and the feel of the whole thing is wonderful. In fact, we even motor more than we used to. This is because the battery bank is so often sitting at 100%. And if we don't use it, it will be going to waste, with the system just dumping excess solar power. At present, we are hanging out on vast Morton Bay, working to get off on an extended cruise. Now, if the wind is under 4 knots, we will happily motor sail the 10 to 20 mile voyages that we often do around this bay at 4 to 6 knots, very strongly and reliably on solar electric power. So we are gaining extra time in our lives. We are still logging a great number of miles, like people do in cars, but travelling by a boat instead. It's a tricky place to navigate with tight shallow channels and a great deal of sandbanks, so we often need to motor. From our house on southeast Russell Island, where Fantasia was built and launched in 2009. We continue to maintain the Butterfly Lodge, even though we live on our boat, preparing it for rent after a spell of Airbnb. Then we'll sail 25 miles back to Waterloo Bay to do some dinghy racing to keep ourselves fit for sailing a 50 foot performance catamaran. Then we might go 7 miles back to Raby Bay where my parents are now living to check in on them who are charging into their mid 80s. Here we can do some shopping, stock up etc. Is this your thing that flies around? No. There? no. Is this a GoPro? There's you two showing how technical you are. Is that a camera? Is that, that a camera? camera? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make it. You can pop that in the bit where you say we go to the Ravy Bay. I've got, yeah. I've got quite a few in service companies for mine, for my service companies. That's more, that's it. You sound smart at the Um, And it's only for me. Then, if it's a nice northerly on, we'll whiz another seven miles out to Peel Island and anchor off its pristine sandy beach and clear water. So we are perpetually moving around the bay doing our various jobs that must be done before we can get off to cruising properly. So it feels a great win for Fantasia, winning back time to do other things. Perhaps best of all, it costs us nothing to run. Equally important, it is so environmentally stable, it just sits there, not chewing up oil and diesel and filters and spitting out beastly fumes. It just sits there, happily doing absolutely nothing. It seems very friendly and forgiving, but of course also extremely powerful, and it promises to continue providing this amazing service for a good 20 years. So there have been a few events which rattled my confidence in making this change which I will now go over. Firstly, there was the day we were charging off, motoring along against a fresh onshore wind, preparing to hoist our sails. And there was a sudden clunk and it stopped dead. Luckily, I was able to fire up the diesel and away we went, untroubled. Now the controller was giving the 15 beep signal, meaning it had a pre-charge error, requiring a return to the factory. Google showed that this issue also affects other brands of controllers, but nevertheless I was feeling very disappointed by the fragility of this device. On the bright side, Golden Motors in China honoured the warranty and were quick to repair it and send it back to me, Express DHL. 
So it was quickly back in action, but my faith was a bit wavering. Some days later, I heard a buzzing inside the, the off-on switch, which activates the main contactor inside the controller. This switch was a 48 volt rated switch for a golf buggy that I had purchased on eBay. What I then discovered was that because this switch was also supplying power to the seawater pump and the coolant pump, as well as the contactor, it was overloading it. When I took it apart, its contact pieces were quite blackened. So now it dawned on me that while we had been motoring hard, this switch had suddenly shut off, which accounts for a failure in the controller. My fault alone there, it seems, in fitting an insufficiently rated switch. I have since installed a secondary contactor, as advised by Golden Motors, who have this as an option, and I'm not sure why they don't just insist that you fit one. Of course now I have a higher amperage rated on off switch. So, moving on to the second issue which gave me doubts. Initially the motor and controller seemed to overheat at 80 degrees Celsius. Hitting these temperatures, the controller would cut down the power substantially. I was a bit puzzled and disappointed by these low cut down temperatures. But it only happened when we tried to run it very hard for prolonged periods. Then I purchased a 3 kilowatt golden motor to run the water maker. Here I made something of an error and got the air cooled model. This meant that we could only run it for just over 30 minutes before it overheated. But its motor cut down temperature was much higher at 145 degrees. This difference in cut down temperature had me wondering. It was only after I did a factory reset on the 10 kilowatt motors controller settings did things suddenly change and its shut off temperature also went up to 145 degrees. Okay, so this is how you, you import the, the correct settings. You'll see here it comes up with the 48 volt version and this will import all the new settings in. So here you would click on the 48 volt motor and then go OK and it will update your settings. So once I had done that, I looked down here at the temperature that it can run to had gone all the way up to motor over temperature limit threshold 145 degrees. So instead of shutting down that I, I think it was 80 degrees, but now it can go all the way to 145. So this was quite the revelation to discover this. Now the 10 kilowatt motor could be run as hard as we liked and still not get over 100 degrees and doesn't shut down power when you, when you need it. Even then it doesn't feel very hot to touch as the temperature sensor is deep inside the motor. So this made me feel a lot more confident in the golden motor's ability. Yeah, it runs at 95 degrees, no problem. Another thing that happened when the on switch suddenly shut down the motor at high load was that the throttle also failed. Here I was to learn how easy they are to repair. Throttles are basically amazingly simple. A magnet moves over a Hall effect sensor, varying the voltage output. For around 50 cents each, I was able to buy E49 Hall effect sensors and repair the throttle with some simple soldering. My appreciation of the simplicity of electric motor systems went up another notch here. Also, when researching this video, I discovered yet another remarkable thing. Having not done a max output test since doing a factory reset on the controller, I was in for a surprise. I set up the GoPro to record the output and gradually built up the power. I was amazed at the output as I saw it rise way beyond 14 kilowatts all the way to 19 kilowatts. The boat was flying, then suddenly it shut down. At this point, the BMS had gone past its output limit, and so it cut down the power. Fortunately, as I eased down the power, it quickly came back on again. 
Also in our favor here and showing the benefit of the secondary contactor, this sudden shutdown of power, even at such an extreme output, did not damage the control work. So this goes to show the fitting of a secondary contactor on the golden motor controller is well worth it. So looking at the settings, I could see the controller would allow up to 400 amps and the VMS could only supply 300. So I have reset this using the EZ Tune app, which is very handy and simple and full of many adjustments. Peak power of 15 kilowatts. So I just put a number in there and I update there. The engine clicks and it says setting succeeded. That's how easy it is to adjust the motor via your phone. Now it's coming up to the time I need to change my diesel fine filter and pre filter and change the oil, which are not my favourite tasks. Gosh. All in an oil change, but it's pretty much half of the course. All this mess and paraphernalia and old oil and filters that you get when you do an oil change. So I'm wondering now, what do I have to do to my electric motor? So yeah, in contrast, I've had to come in here and clean out the, uh, the water filter and give my motor a bit of a wipe over, the dust off it. Yeah, a little bit of a wipe over. That's it, really. The batteries need no maintenance other than a quick look over. They are well protected away from corrosion and the connections are treated with silicon grease. So it all just sits there happily year after year. No topping up of water, no testing with a specific gravity tube, no corrosive gases, just a huge amount of power, which we can also use to run the house loads when there is excess, which there mostly is. And a look at the BMS app shows we have only used 66 of its 6,000 cycles. Okay, so I, I hope you've gathered just how impressed we are with our 10 kilowatt electric motor and 15 kilowatt battery. Each day as the sun pours down on us and we harvest its power, we are enchanted to watch our system recharge at no effort or cost to us. Like any system, it's not perfect but it's working amazingly well for us. How a 10 kilowatt motor matches a 20 kilowatt diesel, I'm not exactly sure. There's the parasitic drag of the alternator and water pump bleeding off power, as does exhaust back pressure and internal friction as they rapidly create heat in the motor. All I can say is that in practice, we have most certainly found the 10 kilowatt electric motor performs as well as the 20, 20 kilowatt diesel. Any issues we've experienced have been inexpensive to rectify, clean, and they've involved no back-breaking, knuckle-busting torture in the engine room. There's been lessons to learn, of course, but no more than what's involved in running a diesel, less really. So now we're feeling very confident in our system and we're just about to head off for some extended cruising, which we're very excited about. So if you're interested to learn more of how this system performs and see where destiny takes us, because we don't really have a destination just yet, we'd love you to join us by subscribing to Fantasia Sailing Thank you and happy sailing. Headed back to North Bay, just passing Lady Elliot Island. Headed down to the Brink Sea Spit and Double Island Point.